Good evening. Good evening. How is everybody this evening? Good. Oh. Happy. Happy. This is night number three of our lectureship. Um, <laughs> we're glad to have you all out with us tonight. Um, we're glad to have our, uh, I'm just going to say North Texas family. Because we have North DeSoto. I ain't going to have you stand up because I know Rupert's going to do that later. And give me a chance. But there's no place like that. <laughs> and Jerry's going to do the same thing with Pleasant Grove, folks. But we're glad to have a number of different people with us tonight. We do have North Minnesota. We have Pleasant Grove, South Central, Evan, um, San Saba. We have Lampasas, like, First Street. Lomita. We, have, we do have Cherokee. We have Lomita. So I am very glad and thankful that, and there may be some I missed. We have Marble Falls. We got Marble Falls in here also. Red Club. We got red blood. So we are glad to have the number of people that we have here. Tonight our two speakers are Rufus Johnson, who is the minister of the North DeSoto Church of Christ, and Jerry Norris, who is the minister, one of the ministers of uh, the Pleasant Grove Church of Christ in Dallas, Texas. I'm going to go ahead and introduce Brother Norris all that man. Brother Norris Jr. So I don't have to do that. <laughs> Mr. Rufus Johnson. Uh, so at the appropriate time, he can just come up. His topic tonight is maintaining and safeguarding the highway of holiness in the wilderness world. Um, I know he brought a member of his congregation with him, Mr. Page, his song leader, his right hand man. But tonight, Mr. Tennant will be our song leader. So. I don't think it's too long for most of us not He's here. Um, the congregation, part of the congregation is here. We're glad to have them. They travel a long way inside. Yeah. <laughs> we don't roll. Yeah. 
Salvation had been brought Yeah, yeah, you know which one it is. <laughs> what number is that? You don't need to put it. has been brought down. All right, after this selection, we have. I know what it's all
is all over the land and can go teach it in in every nation all over creation the Lord salvation has been brought down Amen. thank God it's certainly is an honor and a privilege and I count it as a blessing to be with uh, the Church of Christ here in Lomita for this lectureship I'm certainly appreciative of those who came from uh, the North and Solo Church. If you would, go ahead and stand where you are. I'm doing it. You can stand to the North and Solo, we say that there is no, no place, place like this place. place. Anyway, we're in this place, place because this is the place. place. And it's certainly good to be here. And uh, <laughs> we have a special guest this uh Dorita, who is our professional driver, here with us. Yeah. yeah. This is our professional driver who's driving the big bus. Uh, we appreciate her as well. Roof. Roof. <laughs> Roof. Yeah, we, we, can, can you make an announcement for me real quick? Yeah. Let them know we have some assisted hearing things back there if they need them. Oh, yeah. Uh, Brother Jalen said they have a, some assisted devices if you need the assistance of hearing, if you'll let them know that they can get them to you. Let back that and let you know. If you need assistance in hearing. Uh, tonight again, uh, this lectureship, the theme is to be holy for I am holy from first Peter one verse uh, sixteen. Mm -hmm. I've been assigned at a topic maintaining and safeguarding the highway of holiness in the wilderness, in the wilderness world, from Isaiah chapter 35 and verses 8 through uh, verses 10. Mm -hmm. I've been struggling with my voice the last week, so I almost lost my voice last week, uh, but I'm praying tonight I can get through this. Maintaining and safeguarding the highway of holiness in the wilderness world. The Bible says here in Isaiah chapter 35, we're going to be focusing on verses 8 Verses 9 and verses 10. And verses 8 says, And a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, those, those fools shall not err therein. When we listen to these words, it's pretty clear that Isaiah is talking in prophetic language. And sometimes it might be a little difficult to make the association, but I just tell you right off the bat, they are messianic prophecies. Yeah. When we look in the Bible, what I've done is I took the Thompson chain and I just looked at some of the references in the Bible that talks about the highway, mm -hmm. or talks about the way. Uh, well, I don't have to give much discussion about it because we all know that it is a definite article that would signify only one. Mm -hmm. But in Proverbs 16, 17, it says, the highway mm -hmm. of the upright to depart from evil. We get an idea of what uh, Isaiah is going to be talking about. Isaiah 35, 8, he says, it shall be called the way of holiness. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 43, verse 19, 19, he says, I will even make a way in the wilderness mm -hmm. and rivers in the desert. Yeah. In Isaiah 62.10, I want you to pay special attention to Isaiah 62.10 and also Jeremiah 31, verse 21. Because 62.10 says, prepare ye the way of the people. Mm -hmm. Then it says, cast up. And then it says, cast up highway. Yeah. In Jeremiah 31, verse 21, he says, set the way marks. In other words, like mile markers set up markers on the highway, mm -hmm. and make the, he says, high heaps. And then he says, set thine heart toward the highway. Yeah. Cast up, cast up highway, set up heaps. The reason I tell you that from these verses that's found in God's holy writ, when Isaiah the prophet received this message from God Almighty, mm -hmm. here in Isaiah chapter 35, in Isaiah 35, Isaiah starts and he prophesied of a time when mankind would see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. That's what 35.2 says. 
also, it is very clear that Isaiah, it would be a time when the exhausted would be encouraged. It would be a time when the feeble would be strengthened. It would be a time when the eyes of the blind would be opened. A time when the ears of the dumb would be would, would, would be unstopped, the death would be unstopped, and the rain would leak, and the tongue of the mute would shout for joy. Yeah. Now, if you read Matthew chapter 11, verse 3 through 6, it is identical language when that actually happened. Mm -hmm. So we have a clue as to what Isaiah is talking about. Even though he's talking about blossoms and rivers out in the desert and how it's going to be a highway and how everything is going to change and the people who are depressed now are going to be lifted up and the people who are, are, are oppressed is going to change how they're going to be delivered. It's very clear that he's talking about the coming of the Messiah in a day when everybody will have access to this new highway, the highway of holiness the one that is set up higher than any other highway. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah's talking in this prophecy. This is a phenomenal thing about God's word. That's why we trust it as being inspired. Yeah. Isaiah is making this prophecy 700 years before Jesus Christ is ever born. Mm -hmm. But it is very clear that when Matthew makes his account in Matthew chapter 1, if you read it about his birth and his genealogy, how he talks about how Emmanuel got with us, it is very clear that's what Isaiah is talking about. Right. But I believe that the most enlightening part of this whole revelation in Isaiah chapter 35 is in verses 8, when he says, a highway uh -huh. will be there, a roadway, and it will be called the highway of holiness. Yeah. And that's where we place our focus uh, tonight. I always give a final exam at the end of all of my lessons, yeah. but I always give the answers to the final exam before we start. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to give you the answer to the final exam. <laughs> Here in Isaiah 35, verses 8, 9, and 10, I'm convinced if we are to maintain and save God the highway of holiness in this wilderness world, mm -hmm. if we are to make this world and be a part of in this world, of making the world blossom or bloom or like rivers of uh, people that see the glory of God. It has to be an understanding that this highway of holiness, it is a high way, yes. high way, and it is a holy way, and it is a harmless way, and it is a heavenly way, and it is a happy way. Yeah. Now, what, what did I say? What did I say we we're going to talk about? Highway, highway, holy way, harmless, heavenly, and happy. Okay, now yeah. So y'all going to take a nap now. I wake up and get to the problem. I wake up the problem. Remember the passage that I shared with you in Isaiah sixty two ten and Jeremiah thirty one twelve about lift up, cast up, make high heaps, make the highway higher than the highway. Yeah. That idea come from, in the ancient days, what, what the kings would do, it was a royal road yeah. that the ancient kings would actually build that was higher than anything else in the city. All right. And in a number of times, they would build it wide enough where you could take four to five chariots of breast down this highway. <laughs> It would be a highway that was built up, the heaps were built up, the mounds were built up, the dirt was built up, and it was higher than anything in the city. It was the highway. It was the one for the royal road. Yeah. And so in ancient times, those powerful kings would build these roadways through their kingdoms, and these roads were built very high above the surrounding land, and this prevented the king having any kind of deterrent or uh, any roadblocks or uh, anything in the way when he got ready to travel. Yeah. Since nobody knew whenever the king was going to travel, common people could not use this road. It had to stay clear, yeah. it had to stay clean, mm -hmm. and it had to be clear all the time. It's kind of like if the president come to Lomita, they would block all these streets off. Would nobody be on this street but the security and the president? 
He didn't get the chair. They were blocking off. I, 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 we got blocked off. I don't know who the dude the chair was a few weeks ago on, on Interstate 20. All, all the way through our top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, all, all, all the way from like down the Ferry Road, all the way like up to Polk Street. It was, it was blocked off. Everything was blocked off. It was a big dignitary. That's how this is wrong. That's why it was called the highway. Highway. And so it was a highway. He used that analogy to say only the king and the royal uh, group could travel on it. Nobody else could travel on it. There would be no wild animals on it. There would be no people on it. There would be no trash on it. No wonder we hear Isaiah say that not even the food should air that in, but there won't be the lion, the ravenous wolf, the violent thing on this road. Because he used this analogy to help us understand it's a high way yeah. that is a high way that's a holy way that's the only way and it is the only way that the redeemed can travel yeah. so let's start with verses 8 in verse 8 we said the first thing that we see in this is that it was a what kind of way high. it was a high way so these roads were easy to be recognized they were well maintained and kept open all of the time because it had to be a safe and a very quick way for the king and his royal people to travel. So it was a highway that was reserved for the king, for the king, for the king and his court exclusively. This road is called a way. The words mean path, but not just a path. The word means a course in life. And so it also is called the way of holiness. It was not a free way. It was a toll way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. It was not a free F R E E way. It was a toll way. Okay. This word was clean. It was holy. It was reserved for those who have been redeemed and delivered from their sins. Yeah. It is for those who have been made new creatures in Christ Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. If you be in Christ, you are a new creation. Yeah. All right. Old things are passed away, behold. and behold all things, things are to be made new. new. Yeah. 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 Isaiah prophesied that the time was coming when there would be a way. There would be one who would bring this way. Yeah. He would be one who would give very, very clearly yeah. the plan to travel this way. And it would be so clear and understandable that even the most foolish person, the word he used, the one who wouldn't have to have education, you would not have had to matriculate it down the halls of academia. You would not have to have, to have a lot of degrees. He said he made it simple enough that anybody that wanted to understand it can understand it. Yeah. Anybody that does not understand it is somebody who has made a decision that they don't want to understand it. God has made it and sent the plan. It is for redeemed people who will accept the plan. Yeah. In Romans chapter 6, Paul talks about the new creation. When you've been baptized into Jesus Christ, as he talks about how to bathe the pattern, you rise from the water and ready to walk in the newness of life. You're a brand new creature. You are not what you used to be. You are holy now walking on the king's highway. Also in John chapter 3, Jesus talked about it with Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. When Nicodemus was having a problem understanding birth, he said, except the man be born of the water and of the spirit, you can't enter the kingdom of God. He said, how can a man be born again when he's an old man? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Jesus basically said, man, if you can't understand the physical, you're going to have a real problem understanding the spiritual. Yeah. If you won't open your heart to understand this physical illustration, there's no use to be talking to you about the spiritual. There are some people who will block this out. When the message comes, the glory of God comes, when the highway is presented, when the message is very clear, there are people who act like they can't understand it. Yeah. Preach. In the food they're in. But not only is it a highway, it's a holy way. We're living in a society of a day when people claim to know Jesus, but they like to pray kind of like a day ago with their lives and with sin, but the Lord expects his people to be separate. Yeah. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Come ye out from among them, said the Lord. Be ye separate, said the Lord, and I will receive you. No wonder John 1, 12 says, To men receive him, but he didn't give the power to become the sons of God. God has sent a very clear plan for the people that want to walk in the way of holiness on the high highway to please
please God Almighty, people, we can hear it and understand. Titus 2, 11 and 12, the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching unto denying ungodliness and world lust. We should live soberly and righteously in, in, in this present, present world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if somebody didn't believe in Romans 3, verses 3 and 4? What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true in every man alive. Amen. Come on. God put some stuff in this book. Yeah. Hebrews 10, verse 7, Lo, I come in the volume of a book. To do thy will, O God. Psalm 68, verses 11. The Lord God gave the word. And great was the company of them that published it. John 12, 48. He that rejected me and received not my word. Hath one that would judge him the words that I have spoken. The same to judge him in the last days. John 20, verses 30 and 31. Truly did Jesus, many of the signs and the prince of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these that are written are written that you might believe. And that through believing you might have life in his name. I got one better than that for you, though. Yeah. Revelation 20, verse 12. I saw the small and the great standing before God in judgment. And the books were opened, and another book, which is the Lamb, Book of Life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were found written in the book. Yeah. Isaiah said, That's coming today when the glory of God will be revealed. And it's going to be revealed to everybody, but it's a whosoever we owe. That's why John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not pay. He didn't say would not, he said should not. Come on, Ruth. Because it's a whosoever will. People will hear this message and they'll walk away like they never heard it. People will walk right up to the highway of holiness and see the way and hear about the way. When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, yeah. and the Hello, life. No and man. people say, I, I don't want it. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, if I'm wrong about this gospel, I spent my life in a futile ambition. Yeah. But if I'm right and if you don't obey it, you'll spend eternity paying for it. Amen. It's a holy way. He expresses us to restrain from even the appearance of evil in our lives. Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 5, 22, that's what it says. Abstain from every appearance of evil. There's some things that are not downright sin. But they ain't no good for you. Well, ain't no good for you. It's what I call lamp bug sins. <laughs> the little lamp bug sins. It's those sins that people think they're getting away with. You know, like when you say, people say, well, where's the scripture that say you have to come back to Peter and worship? I said, well, you find the one for A.M. and then you still have it. <laughs> oh, you meddling. <laughs> when you find the one for A.M., I'm sure you're smart enough. Since you bought it up, you can find the one for A.M. <laughs> That's the smart people find it. When you find one for A.M., yeah, you just find one for P.M. Preach, Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wilson. You still got the keys for the bus. I might want to leave soon. I got to park the bus by the door. Those who refuse to live a life of holiness will not be permitted to walk on the heavenly way. And we see a clean life as a mark of salvation, 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and verses 4. If a person says that I know God and will not keep his commandments, mm -hmm. he says he's a liar and the truth is not in him. Mm -hmm. We know God, he says. Yeah. Why, John? Because we keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. No wonder John 14, 15, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, mm -hmm. keep my commandments. Which means, if I'm not willing to keep his commandments, that means that I don't love him. 1 John 2, 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They didn't come from God. Where did they come from? In the next place, it's a holy way. Isaiah says we are wayfaring men. You know what that means? That means that we are Pass by. You know what that means? That means that we didn't come here to stay. No matter. That means that whatever kind of house you live in is just a tent. Amen. The house that we live in down here on this earth is just a tent. When we serve the Lord the way we serve Him, this down here is just a getting ready time. It's a get, getting dressed up time to go to the real thing. This is not the real deal. Amen. We are but strangers. We're just passing through. Mm-hmm. He says, the wayfaring man, which means pilgrims on this road and don't always know what lies ahead. And people might even think that we have a blind faith, but our faith is not blind. 
even though we can't see physically where we're headed, we trust and have faith in an almighty God, not blind faith, but based on his promises. Amen. Amen. And so if the Lord says, take off and run and jump through the wall, you ought to just take off running. That's the kind of faith. Yeah. You believe in that God Almighty is the one who will open the wall. Yeah. So the way for that, we don't always and don't have to see physically where we're going. Yeah. We have to have a faith to trust Almighty God. But if we will walk in his path and follow his lead, we will not err. In other words, what Isaiah talks about, that word error means to wonder, to stumble, to stagger, or to fall off. Yeah. Now here's what it says. It's like, it's like the epistle of John. Mm -hmm. When John says that God's word abides in you, can't commit sin. Some people think you, you're saying you can no longer sin. We're not saying you can no longer sin. What we're saying is the child of God mm -hmm. walking on the heavenly highway, the high mm -hmm. highway, is a committed child of God mm -hmm. who has made a commitment never to become a habitual sinner again. Amen. Amen. So John says in 1 John 2, my little children sin not, but when you sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, who is a perpetuation for our sin. He not only understands my sins, he's right there alongside of me with the sin, saying, come on, you can make it. But not only Jesus, sin will come past the Bible, so great a cloud of witness, mm -hmm. let us run the race with patience. Look at the Jesus who is author and the finish of our faith. I not only have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit right there with me, I have our fallen saints who died and who are waiting, who are cheerleaders, who are saying, we made it, keep on keeping on, you can make it, hang on in that, stay on the road of holiness, don't give up your faith, God got your back. I'm a peer of them staggering through this world, but I'm not blind to staggering because I have a faith in a God that's able. The same God that Daniel served when God Almighty locked the jaws of the lion, the same God that he shed, shed like an Abednego served when God Almighty spared them and saved them right in the midst of the fire furnace. Come on, Ruth. We serve an able God, but you gotta understand on the high highway, the holy way. He said you can't even error. As long as God's word abide in you, as long as you're a child of God and hanging in there, he said, I got you. Because I'm, the only people on this road is the king and the king's court. Nobody else is allowed on it. Nobody else can walk on it because they don't have the credentials. Come on, Rufus. Oh, it's a whole way. Walking the highway of holiness is a lifestyle. Not a it's status. not a status. Holiness is simply separation. It is not separation from the world, but it is separation from what the world does. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, I can't take you out of the world. You're in the world. you got to deal with it. Yeah. you got to deal with real stuff. Every day there's real stuff, real junk, <laughs> real problems, real difficulties we have to go through. That's life. Yeah. Jesus said, you don't have to be out of the world but you're not supposed to be participating in what the world does. Mm -hmm. Some people get it mixed up sometimes. Then in the third place, what did I say? Well, oh, yeah, it was a homeless one. Yes, Isaiah says the way is saved. He said, won't be no lions on it. Won't be no ravenous wolves on it. And somebody thinking like, some, some people interpret it and say, oh, man, won't be no lions and bears there. Yeah, okay. He's not talking about no lions and bears like you see out in the, in the, out in the woods. He's, he's talking about those ravenous beasts. They, they're not committed on this road. No, he said, on this road, there won't be no dangerous beasts. There won't be no lions. There won't be anything that will harm you if you stay on the road. So the rabbit, those ravenous, when he says those ravenous wolves, he's talking about violent ones. He's talking about murderers. He's talking about anything that would do God's people harm. Uh -huh. And so along as a pilgrim stays on the highway, he's saved from the attacks of those who would destroy him. But if he happens to make an individual decision to step off of the highway, Oh, boy, he's fair game. <laughs> Do you know Reverend John in, in Revelation in apocalyptic language? He's explained that he saw this angel come down from heaven and he has this great chain mm -hmm. and he bound the old devil and locked him up for a thousand years. Yeah. People be trying to interpret that 
as, as something uh, uh, literal. Mm -hmm. What that helps us understand, Isaiah says there's coming a time that's going to be a plan so clear that not even a fool could miss it. Yeah. There's going to be a highway that's going to be so easy to walk. Anybody can walk it if they're willing to submit. So here's what it says. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, he allowed Satan to do some things because he was down here to help. Mm -hmm. Now that he's gone, he left the word that is the binding power yeah. over the satanic powers of the world. Come on, Rufus. And that's why those apostles, whenever they got in trouble and whenever they were attacked by any kind of enemy, they yielded the spiritual sword of God that's quick and powerful and yeah. sharper than a two-edged sword and has the ability and the tenacity to cut growing coming. This word of God is so powerful. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for that means the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. We have a power in this word, in this word that's so strong and so powerful that God backs that if you use it, it can knock down strongholds. Stop the mouth of the game says the power is in God's word. Yeah. Amen. We got to trust God's word. Yeah. We got to spend time with God's word. We got to meditate on God's word. Yeah. We got to eat it. We got to digest it. We got to make the application and share with other people. I'm telling you, I was just saying that come the time if you stay on the, on the highway, the devil can't touch you. You step outside, yeah, you're, you're on your own then. First Peter 5, 9, First Peter 5, it tells us who this enemy is. We are fighting against an untired enemy. It's the devil, if you didn't know it. Tongue scratch. And if you didn't know it, the devil cares nothing about you. Nothing. Peter says in First Peter 5, 8, he's like a roaring lion. He's going about seeking whom he made about. I just said he won't be on this way. He set out the devil, his whole game. He'd be so happy to snatch you up in his clutches. Yeah. He want to trap you. He want to zap you. He want to school you. He want to fool you. He want to reach you. He want to teach you. He want to chew you up and spit you out. He want to snatch your body and destroy your soul. Yeah. Yeah. He cares nothing about you. But he can't touch you if you're walking on the king's highway. First Peter 5, 9. Keep on submitting yourself by faith. James 4, verse 7, humble yourselves under God, submit yourselves under God. Then he says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen. Now, don't get that mixed up. That's an equation that has to be followed exactly. Submitting yourself unto the Lord, yeah. resist the devil and he'll flee from you. If you try to resist the devil, get him to flee from you by yourself without submitting to the Lord, Say it. oh well, you're on your own. This road is only reserved for the redeemed. Amen. It's only reserved for the king and his court. Those who have been rescued from sin and from Satan can walk on this road in absolute safety. I know what somebody's saying. Well, I'm trying to do my best. I'm having a hard time. Oh, well, yeah, it goes with the territory. But does that mean that God is not right there with you? <laughs> Sometimes... God shows up and shows out the best when we're having the hardest time. Yeah. When we're doing well, you know how we are. But we got two cars in the garage, two chickens in every pot. We got money in the bank, got IRAs and all that. We get the big hit. We said, I made it on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We didn't need God. Back in the days when we were struggling, we had to go out in the cotton field early in the morning, stay late at night, make a dollar two a day, eat biscuits. Cornbread and red beans. Oh, we were singing something like, oh, Lord, nobody knows the trouble I see. Nobody knows. But you, and then he let us move up town, get electricity, and run the water. Look at us. Look at us. We're going all kinds of, we on, we on all kinds of ways. It's like in Jeremiah's day. Stand ye in the ways and see, and that's for the ways, yeah. he said. And when you find it, he said, walk there in. And the people said, we will not. Now, brothers and sisters, in this country, we've lost our ability to blush. Amen. There was a time, there was a time when there was certain things that wouldn't, they wouldn't even do out behind the barn. Yeah. 
<laughs> and nowadays it struts right down the aisle at church. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and we say, oh, wow, man, we do. Everything's hunkered on me. I'm telling you right now, if you don't believe that the, the, the low living has high prices with it, you ask Samson. He'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> Samson will tell you. Rufus, he said, I found out that low living carries a high price. I ended up blind and bounded and grinding. That's what Samson would tell you. Low living has a high price. You'd be like Tony Joe Henry, the one of the first ladies that was ever ex electrocuted in the lecture chair down in Louisiana. You the riotous life. She was coming up to the, the, the lecture chair. And they asked her if she had anything to say. She said, well, she said, I, I knew all the time that God ran the whole show, but I tried to steal just one act. Mm -hmm. And then she said something that's very profound. She said, mm -hmm. and so this is the price I pay just for one the riotous day, years of regret and grief and sorrow without relief. Suffer thy will, my friend, suffer until the end, until the grave shall give him release. Small was a thing I sought. Small was a thing at best. Small was a thing I got. But oh God, the interest. Yeah. This is the price I paid. Just for one riotous day. Years of regret and grief. And sorrow without relief. Mm. They would tell you, low living on the road away from God. From the way of holiness. Yeah. Oh, it's a terrible price. It's a price that you can't pay. That's why the record says, what would a man gain if he, what would he gain if he gained the whole world? And lose his soul. Or what would he give in exchange for his soul? God sees one soul as more precious than the whole world. And then my brothers and sisters, this way out there talks about in prophecy about the day when Christ is coming and this beautiful gospel that brings this message to get us on this high highway. It's a heavenly way. Yeah. The highway, he says. He says, when you look at 8, 9, and 10, he says, this highway terminates in Zion. Y'all know what Zion is? Yes, sir. Yeah, it becomes the picture for holy Jerusalem, yep. which becomes the after becomes the type of the epitype of the, this Christian dispensation and the Lord's church mm -hmm. and everything that Jesus and the Lord's church stand for. Mm -hmm. This highway, this high highway, mm -hmm. as we're working on, working on it, when God give you a message that's so plain you can't miss it mm -hmm. and keep on walking on it and stay with it by faith, mm -hmm. he says it will terminate of the goal, mm -hmm. of the objective, of the end game for us is one day to terminate and to end up in heaven, Zion is where we're headed. Amen. That's why we can't spend our lives like chickens and hogs just always looking down on the ground. We got to sow like eagles. Yes. We got to get up well. We got to sow like eagles. That's why Isaiah said, they that they, they wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and shall mm -hmm. wing like eagles. He didn't say chicken and he didn't say hogs. <laughs> mouth of a wing like eagles, it shall run and not be weary, that shall walk and faint not. So the road, the road we travel leads to glory. As I said, it's going to be glory, it's going to be singing, it's going to be song. Sometimes the road is level, sometimes it's very easy. Sometimes the road has a few bumps in it, other times it's a little bit rough. Sometimes it's a little bit steep, but regardless of the path, we're called on the walk in this life, the King's Highway, because it leads the pure of home. Have you ever read that passage in John 14 that starts off with Jesus was looking at his trouble and walked to disciples and listening to that question of doubt? His mouth all the way down, his drooping all the way down because he was going to leave and they said, oh, he's going to leave us without anybody. We're going to be left alone. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Mm -hmm. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, I'm going to mention, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you mm -hmm. under myself. Yes. Where are you going, Lord? We don't know where you're going. He says, he tells you where the place is. When he says, you know, we don't even know. If you show us the Father, it's a fire truck. He said, you mean to tell me I've been here all this time? You say, show us the Father? When you see me, you see me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. Now, the Lord is preparing a mansion. That's, where we, that's our objective. And we have to send up timber for the mansion. 
Now, most people don't have enough timber up there for a chicken coop. <laughs> they, they expect, they expect when they die, somebody gonna bleed their belly and they gonna slide under the pearly gate and treat God. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. It's a heavenly way. He says there's joy and there's gladness at the end of the way. John says in Revelation 14, 13, I heard the Spirit talking, and the Spirit said to me, John, right. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. They, yeah. His force said the Spirit, they do rest from their labor, and their works do follow them. Isaiah talks about that day when sorrow and sign is all going to flee away. When the pilgrims reach the end of this road, like Paul in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, I finished my course. His work has laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, not to me only, but to all of them that keep on walking on the highway, who loves his appearing. That's why, my brothers and sisters, when you obey this gospel and get on this way, you can't quit, you can't stop, you, you can't take an exit ramp. Oh yeah, there's a mansion. There's a crown for us at the end of the way. John 14, verses 1 through 3. Revelation 2, verses 10. Be faithful even if it means death. I'll give you a crown of life. That faith is not away. Yeah, there's a glorious city at the end of the way. Revelation 21, verses 9. Chapter 22 and verse 5. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the place where there's peace and where there's joy. When there's blessings at the end of the road. Revelation 21, 4, there'll be no more sorrow, there'll be no more pain. You won't have to worry about high blood pressure and high cholesterol and diabetes. All that stuff will be over with. Yeah. At the end of this journey, in Zion, in heaven, what is our objective? Then the Bible, he tells us in Revelation 22, 4, we'll meet him and we'll see him face to face. All right. And he says in Revelation 22, 4, that his name will be written on our forehead. Right down our focus. Some people go outside around the neck. That's the only way you know they they go about big old cross and say, I is a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, you don't have to tell them. We'll know it if you are. Yeah. So I say keep walking this path. Don't look, don't look for an exit off. Don't look for an exit ramp mm. off of this highway. This is a not a freeway, it's a tollway. You don't get no extra exit off of this. If you take the exit, there's, there's one exit off of this, it's in glory, it's in Zion, it's in heaven itself. That's where, that's where we're here, at least in heaven. That's why Paul says in the Philippian letter, Philippians chapter 3, he says, I press for the mark of the high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus. Because he's looking for, he's hanging on in the, through the difficulty, through the hard time, whatever it is, you got to hang on in there and stay on the heavenly highway. And then it's a happy way. We're told that the pilgrims on this road come with songs, he says in 35 and, and verse 10, and everlasting joys upon their heads. This road can become difficult sometimes, and the, the, the pilgrim's strength might be kind of fading away sometimes, but they got to travel on with joy. Even through the hours of joy, like the Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptation. Oh, I, I know that's hard. I know that's hard. But when you know you're on the heavenly highway and that Christ Jesus is right there with you, you can find contentment even in the toughest of times. You gotta hang on in there and you gotta stay with it because you know what awaits at the end of the journey. And you gotta see the difficulties of this world, but light afflictions of this world that will work for us an eternal weight of glory. Because they know the highway of holiness out of all the other ways. There are a lot of ways out there that you can take. But the child of God knows once they hear this clear message that the fool could even error that in, that it's going to be so plain. They know it's the best way. There is no other way like it. The Lord's highway is the best way possible. And those who walk the King's highway, they experience the peace of God, Philippians 4, verses 7. They experience his joy, 1 Peter 1, verses 8. They experience his presence, Hebrews 13, verses 5. And his blessings along the way, Philippians 4, verses 19, and Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. And at 25. Yeah, it's a happy way. Even if the whole world say that the Bible is a lie mm -hmm. and that Christ doesn't exist, you got to know the best life to live is this Christian life all the way and I to live it because it's Christ living in us. Yeah. Yeah. It's 
Paul says in Galatians chapter 2 20, sure. Galatians 2 20, it is no longer I that live, but Christ Jesus that lives mm -hmm. in me. We gotta forget about the beggar elements of the world and the junk and the stuff of the world mm -hmm. and think about heavenly things about our home, where we're headed, mm -hmm. that will terminate in Zion itself. Walking the highway of holiness brings joy, peace, and rest to a weary heart. Mm -hmm. Our brothers and sisters, we must rise up with a new readiness and a stronger determination to make real, to maintain, and to save God the highway of holiness in a wilderness world. What road are you walking tonight? Are you on the King's Highway? Are you on the Highway of Holiness? Are you walking out in the wilderness world? Are you still running around in midnight darkness out in the wilderness? Or will you come to the Holy Highway of the Lord and accept a message so plain that he says you can't even miss it? And allow him to lift you out of the miry clay of the world and worldliness and materialism and plant your feet safely on solid ground. If he's done something good for you, if he's blessed you, if you ran the race for a while or need to come back, if you need to make adjustments, Brother Jerry's going to allow you the opportunity to do that when he gets to his. But if you need to be make adjustments tonight to get on the road or to be saved to get on the road, I bid you, you ought to do it tonight. Revelation 20. And that they might enter the city through the gates. Here's the final exam. I know some of y'all already forgot it. If we're going to maintain the safe God, the highway of holiness out in the wilderness world, we have to remember what Isaiah says. This highway here, first of all, it's a highway. It's a holy way. It's a homeless way. It's a heavenly way. And thank God, it's a happy way. I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord will find a way for me. If I walk in heaven,